Hi and welcome to the Studio Marco Primo. Today is all about techniques to record with Magic Simplitude Pro X6, punch in, punch out, and a lot more tricks. So let's dive in. All right, today we're checking punch in, punch out uh, while recording and making some mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes uh, once in a while. And if you want to remove just a part of your recording, that's how you do it. First, uh, we're going to, of course, create a project, select the input. So if I go there, uh, this is going to be a mono recording. So I engage the mono and I chose the input 11. This is where my microphone is connected. And after that, um, one aspect would be to show uh, the levels. If you right click here, you can select no audio peak meters only. And then if I activate uh, this icon, now I can see the level going in. Healthy levels will be around minus 18 dB, an average, so you can peak a bit above uh, and be a bit below, but if it's an average of minus 18, for digital recording today in our DAWs, it is the best level to aim, an healthy level that uh, the plugins will uh, work fine. So that's what I'm doing. If you see the level right now, before we hit record, we're going to go into the settings and I'm going to show you a very little nice trick. So hit Y on your keyboard, it's going to open the settings. And if you go into recording, there is a few setup, of course, uh, the format at which you're going to record and so on. But this is what we are interesting in pre-recording and uh, post-recording. So this means that if you hit play and the uh, song is going or your recording is playing and you hit record while playing, is going to record a bit before and when you uh, hit record again to stop recording it will record a bit after and this is going to be helpful as well when we do punch in and punch out so the fact of uh, playing the song and then it's going to start to record and stop to record automatically in the range that we will select it means that even though we selected that range, it will still record a bit before and a bit after if um, the musician did something very interesting before or after and you want to keep it. Uh, sometimes it's maybe the reverb in the room or a sustained notes that wasn't there before and you want to keep it. All right. So for me, I selected two seconds before and one second after uh, and you can change them you have some choices you can go up to 30 seconds well this could be interesting if you're doing um, some conference recording or some live stuff maybe but for me two seconds is way enough and then you hit okay of course if you have this selected uh, request after recording uh, the software will ask you what you want to do with the recording you want to keep it and so on this is just disturbing for me so I, I chose always no dialogue if you're going to record a very long conference or a show remember to go there the maximum of your project right now it's 30 minutes so if it's 2 hours long you need to change that right so some little details let's go from the start and record something this is a test of recording with punch in punch out um, there's some parts that we will re-record again because we're not very fond of the result so uh, this is our recording all right there's a few ways to go at it 
um, if you listen to it. So let's listen. This is a test of recording with punch in, punch out. Um, there's some parts that we will re-record again. So let's say that a part that you don't like, let's say this part here, what we could do is play and while playing it record like this. This is a test of recording with punch in, punch out. And we're going to test to record something else over it. So let's hear the difference. This is a test of recording with punch in, punch out. And we're going to test to record some. All right. Um, but of course, if you're going to do that over and over, because I don't know, the guitar player uh, wants to experiment or it is a very difficult uh, playing to do, uh, then you could set up a punch in punch out. But before we do that, let's check our seconds before and after. So you see I hit record here and it record again to stop the recording right there. And if we extend, you see we can see a bit before and a bit after uh, after. Yes, we can see a bit after as well. Okay. So another way to do it would be to uh, put the playhead at the right spot right here and right click, select set punch and marker and then go at the end, right click, whoops, set punch out. All right. But you're not done yet. You need to activate the function and it is done with the button at the bottom right here punch all right so this means that if we hit record at the start this is a test of recording you see it does not record and it will start recording just at the punch in and stop at the punch out let's try it this is a test of recording with punch in, punch out. And we're going to try to replace a part of the recording with the punch that we just did. Very fond of the result. All right. So if we listen to it, punch in, punch out. And we're going to try to replace a part of the recording with the punch that we just did. Very fond of. Okay. Did you hear the, the noise that it made? That we just did. Very that we just did very okay this is because the recording stopped suddenly while there was some audio to be recorded and the digital recording just uh, makes some noise at, at this time if we zoom in you see it stopped in the middle of the wave uh, shape to avoid this you can activate a cross fading Crossfading is when two objects goes on top of each other or uh, very uh, near of each other. They will fade in and fade out so it won't make that kind of sound. So the crossfading is right here, auto crossfading. And let's try it again. Punch in, punch out. And we're going to record some new stuff over what was already there. Use very fond of the result. If we zoom in, we see the fade out and the fade in of the next object. And if it is not at the right spot, the transition is not at your uh, liking, you can uh, move where it's done. Okay, like this. So let's see. And at the start as well. So let's listen, shout, and we're going to record some new stuff over what was already there. And let's say uh, maybe the recording stopped in the middle of a, of a word. So let's see if it does the same noise that it was doing before it was already there because we're not now very smooth. So that's another thing to keep in mind. All right. If like me, you do a lot of recordings you may want to automate some stuff. So hit Y on your keyboard, go into keyboard menu, and then into play record. And you go into marker, and then insert set start and set end marker. So what I did is I did that with my controller 
So you could uh, select, I don't know, uh, the, 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 five, the number five and six and just hit five and six. What I'm going to do right now is use uh, my controller, but you can assign any key if it's not used for another function. function. So let's try it. Um, what you do if you want to do that is you click here and you hit on uh, the key that you want to use like this or uh, control six or whatever. Okay. So the way it works, you make a selection and then you hit the key that you assign start and end both one after the other and it will create the range. So if I do it like this, you see it's pretty fast. So if we want to record again, and we're going to record, and we record again, and whoop, I forgot to deactivate the loop at the bottom. Another thing to remember. So let's try it again one last time. And we're going to record, and we record again over what was already. Okay. So that's the way it works. So that's it. When I first thought about that subject, I feared that it was going to be a two minute long video. But while doing so, making some tests and uh, looking at the settings and everything, I think it is a pretty busy video. So I hope you liked it. If you did, please click on the like button, consider subscribing, hit the bell to get notifications, and put questions and comments below, suggestions for future videos as well. I need you on that because you are the viewer. Just tell me what you want to view, what you want to know. And if I don't have the answer, I might do some research and do a video about it anyway. Also, you can go in the description and click on the merch link. You can buy some t-shirts, uh, some mugs, some other stuff. It will help the channel grow and, of course, um, buy some gear and uh, give you better content. Another way to help the channel is to click away on many videos and share those videos. It's always a great help.